snipers, you have to see what's happening to the Bitcoin price this Wednesdays. I had to get this emergency Bitcoin update out to you guys with our daily candle closing in less than an hour, fully above the 50 day moving average for the first time since we've started this bearish trend. There are a lot of headlines to talk about today. We have some on chain analysis, some fundamental news. And then, of course, we're going to dive into the charts. I am up high right now because we need a bird's eye view over what's happening in this market on a Wednesday. Let's just dive into this four dimensional analysis. We'll cover traditional markets because they're looking really good for Bitcoin. But first and foremost, as we always do, let's talk about what's happening to the Bitcoin price staying above this extremely important support at 41,950. And we also know 44,800 right now is the major resistance level that if we can get a confirmation hourly and four hour above this area, we can potentially come to test the 200 and 100 day moving average and the extremely important level of 49,700. Now, this is something that we've been talking about here on the Snipers channel that Bitcoin needs to get above 49,700 in the immediate short term. If we want to break the neckline resistance on the Bitcoin CME futures chart, so I'm not going to go and dive into that right now. But if you watched our video two days ago, you know exactly what I'm talking about right now at 44,800 though, we're testing the spot price neckline resistance and we want to invalidate this head and shoulder pattern. That's our macro goal for the bulls, right? If you're a Bitcoin bull, we need to invalidate 44,800 by getting above it hourly and four hour candles. And I'm going to tell you right now, the likelihood that this could happen is becoming a lot higher and higher with this daily candle about to close in less than an hour. I had to get this update out to you guys because the four dimensional revolving parts in this market are extremely bullish right now. But let's just first dive into some headlines. Breaking news, Russian government to recognize Bitcoin and crypto as currencies. Why is this important? Well, I'll tell you exactly why this is important, because right now Russia has a grasp in the trade of oil and oil is traded against US dollars. And at this point, Russia has the potential of shifting the playbook against the US dollar, saying now that Bitcoin is a currency, what's going to come next? Are they going to start accepting Bitcoin for oil? That's going to be a huge macro shift. Of course, this is a big deal right now because Russia is starting to make headlines with Ukraine. All of these things are affecting the market. Why are they now saying Bitcoin is now a currency? Are they shooting shots here at the US? That's potentially on the table. I'm not going to go and make some assumptions. I just want you guys to get the news. And then our last headline, and we'll go into some on chain analysis. BlackRock, the world's largest asset manager with $10 trillion of assets under management to offer crypto trading here soon. And I know a lot of people are talking about JP Morgan making different predictions and we're starting to see institutions even Wells Fargo saying that there might be a hyper cycle for Bitcoin with hyper adoption here very soon. Now we're going to get into some predictions and some analysis. I have a very interesting chart that could potentially give us a forward looking idea of what Bitcoin is going to do if we see a break above 44,800 to 50,000 at that $49,700 resistance level, because just keep this in mind through this whole video. If Bitcoin breaks 44,800, maybe while you're watching this, after I upload this, then it's heading towards 49,700 as long as we get those hourly and four hour con confirmations on the candles. Uh, we're going to watch the candle symmetry, of course, for that. So remember to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. If you guys love these hourly and four hour candle confirmations here on the Snipers channel, but on chain analysis, check this out. On chain exchange flow today, nothing to go home and tell grandma about 32 million in Bitcoin coming onto exchanges. I think this could have been to drive some altcoins to the upside. We're going to talk about altcoins in just a second, but we're seeing altcoins move right now while Bitcoin is kind of moving sideways, which is a very positive thing. Ethereum also moving. We'll talk about Ethereum in just a second because this is extremely important. I told you guys yesterday we need to watch Ethereum to Bitcoin chart. Something was going on and what happened today? It pushed to the upside, but it didn't yet break its symmetrical triangle resistance. So I'm going to talk about Ethereum to Bitcoin and how that could lead the other altcoins because we know the Ethereum to Bitcoin chart is the canary in the coal mine for the cryptocurrency revolving parts because it leads the other altcoins the same way that you might look at the transportations in this traditional markets as the canary in the coal mine or maybe the Russell 2000, the small caps to get an idea of how mid caps and large caps are going to move. That's what the theory to Bitcoin chart is used for here on the Cypress channel. But nothing crazy here with on chain analysis when it comes to exchange flow. We have some Ethereum and some USDT leaving exchanges, but check this out. Ethereum minor revenue just reached a six month low. Last time this happened, 
was on the 19th of August when Ethereum was sitting below $2,500 ready to move to the $5,000 level that it went to. It was really like $4,900. But we haven't seen this since August and now we're seeing it again. Minor revenue coming down. And then check this out. A little bit of a bullish puzzle piece here. Ethereum futures open interest just reached an eight month high. Last time this happened was November 10th, right before we saw some very strong momentum from 3,500 to that $5,000 level for Ethereum. So we're seeing a lot of bullishness there. Now check these charts out. Short term to long term coin ratios. This is telling you based on the blue line, what I'm showing you is when we dip into that green zone, pretty much the only people holding Bitcoin at that point are long term hodlers, which means that there's a lot less sell pressure. And look what's happening to this chart right now. We are seeing a push to this green zone. And every time we've seen this, just look at the blue lines. Every time we've seen this, when the supply is held only by long term hodlers, retails get wrecked. Now we're seeing us sitting in an area where it's just long term hodlers holding Bitcoin and that has followed in price action to the upside every time. That's something actually we've been talking about here in the Cypress channel based on Will Clemente saying that during the dip below 34,788 and when we moved sideways around 35,000, all we were seeing is long term hodlers accumulating. They weren't selling off and Demand was starting to wade off a little bit, but I said this to you guys. This is how we predicted 33,000 as the bottom, predicted 34,788 as an institutional accumulation zone. We predicted 38,000 as an institutional accumulation zone. And since then, we haven't seen institutional volume, but we may see it here soon. I'm going to tell you exactly why. But why did we stress Will Clemente's on chain analysis? Because he said if we see the slightest bit of demand come into the market because long term hodlers are holding strong. Price action can aggressively, he said, quote unquote, verbatim, aggressively move to the upside. So smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm and smash the like button for Will Clemente, best on-chain analyst, I think, in the market. And then last chart I want to show you guys, three-day Don Chian channels. Look at the orange line. Every time we're above it, really specifically when Bitcoin was in its major bull turn, we stayed above this three-day Don Chian channel. And that mid line, that midpoint, it's almost like an Ichimoku cloud. You can see uh, when we initially broke above it, when Bitcoin bottomed out around 28 to 29,000 in June, July of 2021, that led Bitcoin to see new all time highs. And right now we are above it. We have a full daily three day candle above this extremely important level. Does that indicate a trend reversal? Well, we're going to talk about that in just a second because I'm going to give you guys a bird's eye view of the market. I'm going to talk about what scenario schematic specifically I think Bitcoin could play out right now with the daily candle fully above the 50 day moving average. You have to think of this like a SpaceX rocket already in the air launching. And so what could we expect if we see 49,700? Well, look what happened to this chart that I want you guys to pay attention to the Cardano to Bitcoin chart had a very similar channel that it recently broke out from and we saw it test its 200 day moving average just like what is happening right now to bitcoin if we pull up bitcoin's price this is against the m2 supply which basically it's like the us dollar price what are we seeing right now the same thing that initially happened to cardano where we broke above this channel we've yet to actually come to this 200 day moving average but does that mean that's what we're going to see and then we could potentially see some calmness and maybe even come back below 40,000 at some point in the medium term, but in the immediate short term, are we ready for this impulse move to test the 200 day moving average for the first time? I think that if that schematic were to play out exactly as it did here with the Cardano chart, what would happen is we would see Bitcoin's price move towards the 200 day moving average, find resistance to test the neckline of the Bitcoin CME chart at 49,700 to potentially then conquer 44,800 fully and stay above it and then turn it into a support level. That would be the most bullish scenario. But what we really need to see continued price discovery for Bitcoin, as I've been saying, is a break of 49,700. That's what we really need. And so at this point, I want to stress this here with you guys one more time as I did in our video yesterday. The range that we're playing as I'm recording this video is the $44,800 to $41,950 level 
41,950 being the support, 44,800 being the resistance. But that could change by the time this video is uploaded. If we break 44,800, what are we looking for here on the Sniper's channel? Hourly and four hour candle confirmations with symmetry and bullish decisiveness that says it wants to go to 49,700. We get that break. We just invalidated a macro bearish pattern on the US dollar spot price against Bitcoin. And now we can come and test the Bitcoin CME futures head and shoulder neckline at 50,000. They're different because CME futures are closed on the weekends, right? So it's just the way this market works. It's the way the market manipulators work. Why is this all important, by the way? The CME chart, why are we even talking about it? Well, the recent bottom that we saw with Bitcoin at 32,930 on the dot was actually a CME gap that was just left there. People forgot about CME charts, forgot about CME gaps, and then out of nowhere, we come and we actually take advantage of a CME gap and that ended up being the bottom best entry for Bitcoin, right? So that's the potential schematics if we break about 44,800. At any point in time, as I talked about yesterday, we can come down all the way to 40,000 and then we can even draw an inverse head and shoulder right now in the micro time frames for Bitcoin. So 40,000 is still on the table, 41,950 also being an important level. And I even said this yesterday, we can even go as far as to say that as long as we don't break below 43,000, because guess what happened yesterday? Remember, the best technical analysis on the internet here on the Cypress Channel, I told you guys we can even go as far as to say we don't break below 43,000 because this is where we saw this hourly bullish continuation candle that we're not gonna see further downside. We didn't even break below 43. So we could say that if we break below 43,000, there's a high chance we test 40,000 and that would be totally fine as I talked about yesterday because that would put us when it comes to market structure inside of an inverse head and shoulder pattern. So that's still on the table as a downside potential scenario if we can't cross above 44,800. But this is the key right here. We need to get above 44,800. We can do it before even forming this inverse head and shoulder and that would be even better for Bitcoin. Now, I wanna talk about some revolving parts of the market. Specifically, why is Ethereum right now seeing volatility, seeing a higher high form without Bitcoin seeing a higher high form? Well, first and foremost, Ethereum is a more volatile asset. And so this is totally fine and expected. And oh, by the way, I do wanna mention this with Bitcoin, we have yet to see more institutional buy volume. Um, and that's quite clear because we haven't seen much price action. Uh, so let's see if Ethereum has seen any institutional buy volume to see this higher high form that kind of decoupled it from Bitcoin. No, hasn't seen institutional volume here. So no big deal here, but we know the range that Ethereum is in has a resistance of 3454 and it also has a support of 2600 where we have the previous weekly open and monthly open right now. So this could be a more volatile asset and it's totally fine to see what we're seeing, but what really matters, and this has always mattered since 2017 when we started making daily videos in the cryptocurrency market, I've always said that you have to look at altcoins against Bitcoin's value. And so notice right now, the Ethereum to Bitcoin chart is back testing this major structural resistance. Why is this important? This is gonna give us an idea of whether or not altcoin season is still in effect. And what I mean by that is the effect that I'm talking about is when Bitcoin moves sideways in an altcoin season, altcoins will tend to perform very well in an altcoin season and an altcoin cycle and move to the upside like Ethereum did today, right? We don't have a full confirmation right now that we're still in that type of season because altcoins have bled. Let's be honest, over the last few months when Bitcoin topped out at 69,000 and we came down, we've seen a lot of altcoins bleed. Some fundamentally sound coins like OMI, Sandbox, People, USDT, all these coins that we trade here on a daily basis have done quite well because fundamentally sound coins will always do well, especially in this new market cycle where Bitcoin dominance decoupled away from the DXY. But what's important to know right now is if we see downside, are we going to be seeing all coins bleed out against Bitcoin? Will the Ethereum bleed out against Bitcoin if we see even the slightest downside, which in any market, even in a bullish cycle, you'll see downside at times. And so the question is, if all coin season is not in effect, that could happen. And that's why it's important to watch the Ethereum Bitcoin chart. And so right now, we don't have a confirmation yet. We still have weakness in my opinion because we broke out of a symmetrical triangle and now we're back in it. That's not a strong sign in my opinion. And we know the altcoins outside of Ethereum when Bitcoin made its strong move to the upside recently above 38,000 decided to actually drop back down to test this support level for a sixth time and if we break below this area, that's not a good sign for altcoins 
against Bitcoin when it comes to us, let's quote unquote say, still being in an altcoin season. And so uh, this chart is led by the Ethereum to Bitcoin chart. So if the Bitcoin uh, pairing against Ethereum can move and break that symmetrical triangle resistance, we could potentially see this break out of its ascending triangle, right? It's even in a bullish macro structure, but uh, but when you're sitting at the support here, you're just kind of chilling here. You knock on the door six times, someone's going to open it. And so that's not what I'd like to see here with the altcoins outside of Ethereum. If Ethereum to Bitcoin chart breaks down, that could lead these coins to come down as well. And we could see a bleed out into Bitcoin, causing Bitcoin dominance to move to the upside. And so I think that these are all very important things to keep in mind. Um, and for those in the discord i will post a chart in the crypto chat that tells you exactly how to understand bitcoin dominance and altcoin dominance uh, but what i do want to talk about to wrap up the video is the dxy is still calm between its 50 day and 100 day moving average but we're seeing the s p 500 move above its 100 day moving average this is exactly what we want to see as a bullish puzzle piece to give bitcoin more strength in the four dimensional revolving parts and the four dimensions of this market this is very bullish for bitcoin to see it moving above its 100 day moving average the s p 500 is exactly what i've been wanting to see and then japan forming new candle highs here with this recent consolidation it looks like we have some momentum taking us towards these daily moving averages that's exactly what we want to see so i would say the revolving parts outside of bitcoin are looking extremely well coinbase closing the day 2.76 percent to the upside still moving up arc innovation etf closing five percent to the upside testing its monthly open right now these are all positive things even after hours arc is up 1.81 percent vix continues to calm down all of these are great puzzle pieces airbnb back above its 250 day moving average moving to the upside with some strong decisive price action the reason that's important is because it's part of tech right tech is important and a lot of times people will say Bitcoin is correlated to the NASDAQ. And so that's why we want to watch these tech stocks, even Snapchat up 7% for the day. So all of the revolving parts are looking good. And so with that being said, we have to put our seatbelts on and prepare to head higher. And that's what I wanted to end this video with, with the sunset. This is a bird's eye view of the cryptocurrency market, a four dimensional analysis brought to you here on the Snipers channel. Thank you all for tuning into the channel today. If you support this content, smash the like button. Remember to turn on those post notifications, hit that bell to ensure you never miss an update, never miss a four dimensional update because these are the most important and will give you the best grasp of what's happening on a day to day basis. And not just the cryptocurrency market, but every market. And with that, I'll see some of you guys on the Discord. I'm going to post that chart about altcoins there uh, because I think we can have even a more elongated conversation about that uh, as I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts as well. And with that, thank you all for tuning into the Snipers channel this Wednesday. I'll see you guys here on Thursday. And until next time, Snipers.